This vintage container was about 30 cents to make. You want to find out how? Let's get started. I redid my coffee bar not too long ago and I wanted to go with more of an antique vintage feel. So I made some dupes that were super affordable. The first one was this DIY scale, which I did in a previous video. I've got the bread box coming soon. This week, we're gonna go over these canisters. After looking online for some inspiration, I found a lot of sets that I liked. A lot of these had the cute vintage retro feel, but I just knew that I could dupe these inexpensively. The consistent shape of all of these seemed a no-brainer to me to use old coffee cans as my base. So I put out a plea to my local Facebook marketplace saying, does anybody have empty cans that they wouldn't mind giving to me? And I got a ton. What this allowed me to do was play around with shapes, see if there were different sizes I wanted to play with. I found that the plastic Folgers cans for me were the best because they came in different sizes, but they had the best seal. And I was thinking about using these for real food. The next thing I needed was the handle to go on these. Now some went on the sides, I wanted mine on the top, so I was looking for a small handle. I didn't find anything in the handles, but I did find this conduit holder. But at $6.21 for a set of two, that was a little expensive for what my dupe was going to be. Next I found these that are supposed to hold either copper straps or PVC fittings. These were the ones that I thought were the best price because you get a five pack for $1.51. So it was time to get started now that I had my handles and my containers. Of course, I started off by washing these thoroughly, not knowing where they came from or what they were holding before. I wanted to get them nice and clean. This also allowed me to know that I had a good solid base for painting. Once I had my painting clothes on, it was time to start painting. This was right after I pulled that muscle and got bit, so I'm really protecting that left side of mine. I ended up using the regular Rust-Oleum paint. This one has primer in it. It works on plastic, metal, wood, cardboard. I love this paint because it pretty much will cover any type of surface. Since I was going for the farmhouse, I went for white. And then for the little handles, these had a little ridge on them, but with some sandpaper or an emery board, you could just file off that little ridge if it bothers you. I didn't care once it's painted, I really didn't notice. So I applied my second coat of white paint and I'm not spraying the insides because again, I do want to use this for food storage, but if you are just using them for decorative purposes, you can spray paint the inside as well. For the handles, I'm just using a basic Rust-Oleum black. It's not a shiny black. I wanted something that was more matte, and I'm just spray painting the handles. While everything's drying, I'm gonna start working on the labels. This is what really gives it the feel of having containers that are more vintage, and there are so many styles out there. There's also a lot that are just ready to buy if you wanna go on Etsy. I went ahead and duplicated something similar in a style that I liked, and I just sized it on my computer, but there really are a lot of options out there on Etsy and they're not very expensive. I think I found some under $2. So if you have some word processing skills, you can go ahead and play with this. Otherwise, just go ahead and find something on Etsy. Now, I found this amazing technique where you print on napkins and it just decoupages onto the surface. I watched a ton of videos on how to do this and every one of them made it look so simple regardless of whether you had a laser printer, an inkjet printer. So I was so excited to show you this technique. They were saying you could use any type of napkin so I got some at the Dollar Tree. Most napkins come in multi layers so it said you just separate them. That was easy. I was able to separate them. You have to watch. Sometimes they're two ply, sometimes they're three ply. It said just take the napkin and cut it down. You don't have to worry really if there's any type of texture to it because it will just print easily. 
I saw a couple of different options. I chose to tape mine down based on the videos I had seen. And on the very first try of putting it in, which I was so excited to do, I just simply fed it into my printer and pressed start. And it jammed like you would not believe. That's okay. I tried it again. This time I used painter's tape to attach it to my paper. I printed and I got my second jam. Never fear, perseverance always pays off. I went through, this time I glued the edges and I fed it through. I knew this time was gonna be a work because third time is always a charm, right? No, even with trying to feed it through, it jammed, so I abandoned the napkin thing. If you've gotten the napkin technique to work, let me know what I was doing wrong. I don't know if because my printer has a tighter grip on the wheels as it feeds it through, if that was the issue, but I did not get this to work. And again, I watched many videos where they had top feeding printers like this and it just went right through and it was lovely. So. I was really sad this didn't work. However, I did have some vellum scrapbook paper. It's the type of paper where you can lightly see through it. It comes in different opacities. And I decided to cut that down and print on it because I didn't want a stark white label against my canisters. So this was my alternative to getting the napkin look. So as you can see, one is transparent, you can see through it. And then if you just want to use regular paper, that's fine. You can absolutely do that. I just didn't want that stark contrast against the canister because the colors are always slightly off. White is always going to be a hard one to match, surprisingly. So you can see here the vellum just kind of blends in where the white looks like an actual label. So if you're gonna do this project, just know the difference. That way you can choose whichever preference you have. So once I printed them all out, I just did a quick fussy cut around the actual printed portion, and I'm going to make sure I line them up and size them to my containers. The containers I have are different sizes. The middle one is slightly taller than the other two. I'm not going to give you sizes for the labels because your canister might be different, but I just measured the space that I wanted to fill with the label and then just sized it on my computer. Now the only other thing you'll need is some small washers and a little nut and bolt for the handle. I had these on hand already because I've been using them to put handles on all of my boxes and bins because I just love that look. But I think I spent at the time under $3 to get a bag of 100 washers, nuts, and bolts. And they have been lasting for quite a while because I've used them so many times. Now to place these, all I had to do was center it in the middle and my lid had a tiny little divot which made it super easy to center. To make the hole, I had an ice pick that I use and I just press it through the hole of the handle. I think this was a tool I used for leather making a long time ago, but an ice pick will work or a large needle. So I just press it through, it goes through the plastic very easily. And then I take the small bolt and I just press it through the handle all the way through the lid where I made the hole. I like to use a washer on the back just to make sure if I ever do lift it by the handle that it doesn't pull all the way through. This is definitely an extra step that's optional, but again, sometimes I want to make sure that that handle stays on and never pulls out. Now I should have spray painted my hardware first, but I didn't. I just used a Sharpie pen to paint them black. Now for the next step, this is optional. You do not have to do this, but I wanted mine to look weathered and distressed. If you want to keep them simple looking, you can pick any color you want on these, but I definitely wanted that distressed farmhouse look. I was trying to go for something that looked like enamel wear, but um, if you don't want to do this, you do not have to distress these at all. Once this step was done, it was time to start attaching the labels. Now do not do this. I painted the paper first. And what happens to paper when it gets wet? It buckles, it warps, and for some reason I couldn't get enough on here to make it stick, so it kept lifting. I have an inkjet, and I wasn't thinking about the fact that the more I touched this label, the more I was transferring the ink 
all over the label. So this first one turned out horrible. I was so disappointed with how it looked at the end. It was wrinkly, it became discolored, so don't do what I did. You could see all the bubbles in this, and it ended up becoming very discolored, which since these are supposed to be distressed, it was okay. The best method is put a pretty generous layer on top of the container and then try not to touch it. Don't put glue on the paper though, just put it on the container. And then if you can leave it alone and add any glue where it's lifting, that's going to be the best technique. But play around, maybe you know a different method. In retrospect, I wish I had used the tried and true spray adhesive that I always use. But again, I had seen so many decoupaging videos that I thought this was the best way. Here I go touching it again. So you can see the oatmeal turned out the best and that was where I did not apply any adhesive to the paper. I only applied it to the actual container. So here they are again on my coffee bar. If you wanna see a video on how to make that scale, I'll have that in the description below. And the next video we're going to go over is how to make that bread box. I'm super happy with these. I would love to do something for the holidays, make different labels throughout the year, change up what I'm storing, but for right around 30 cents per container, I can't beat this. And I get to spray paint them any color I want, change the labels, change the hardware. And if I decide I don't want them or need them anymore, I didn't spend a lot of money on them, so I don't feel bad about getting rid of them and repurposing them for something else. Let me know in the comments, would you do the vintage enamel wear? Would you do a different color? These would make cute containers even for the holidays to give as a container for a gift. So let me know in the comments which way you would make them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll stick around and watch how we make those bread containers. Thank you to my patrons who allow me to make these videos. And thank you to you for stopping by today. I'll see you really soon in the next video. Bye.